Early this month, I spent four amazing days in Stockholm, Sweden, attending the Nobel Prize Teacher Summit. And in this video, I'm going to tell you all about the summit, my experience, and how you can be part of it, especially if you're interested in education. Every year since 2017, the education wing of the Nobel Prize has organized a gathering of educators from all over the world. So this gathering happens in Stockholm, Sweden, the seat of the Nobel Prize, and it brings together educators, thinkers, researchers, discussing the various issues that the world is facing in terms of education. I want to say that peer learning has many benefits, but here we look at uh, what happens when you're not fully engaged. It's been my dream since 2019 to attend the summit and finally this year, 2024, I managed to go and I spent the most amazing days that I've ever had. After almost 14 hours of traveling, I arrived in Stockholm on the first day of the extended program for international teachers. The extended program is a, a program that is designed for teachers coming from different parts of the world into Stockholm. Uh, the summit itself happens in one day, but the international teachers are taken through a program that grounds them and tell them about the Swedish school system and so many things. So I arrived on the first day of the extended program, which was on Wednesday, 2nd October, and checked into my hotel, which is uh, the Red Boat, a very lovely place. I'm going to put a link in the description of the video for those who are going to Stockholm and would love to spend some time here. It has the best views, I think, of Stockholm from the boat. So I arrived on the first day, went to the Nobel Museum, where I met my colleagues with whom we are going to have this program for the remainder of the days. We were introduced to the Nobel Museum and the Nobel Prize in general, and also welcomed to the Teacher Summit. Going to a guided tour and we will have some reception there as well. After that, we went to the Stockholm City Hall, where we were formally welcomed by a member of the Stockholm uh, Council. And it was a lovely, lovely, lovely evening we spent there learning about the uh, Stockholm City Hall and its history and the way that they run the city. Inside, and they will tell you everything about it, so I will do it now, but this is where the actual uh, sermon is after the prize. The prize ceremony is not here, it's in the middle of the city, like uh, we could have walked past it, but we didn't. And, but this is where the dinner and the dances afterwards. So then you, if you're a guest here in December, I might, some of you receive the prize, we'll see. Then you have dinner here. Then you have dinner here. Right. Then you will go through here and up there. But we will start over there. But before we do that, because we're a bit early, we have a little bit problem of I was fast, <laughs> basically, <laughs> as you might notice. But we can go down to the sea here and uh, take a couple of pictures and we will arrange some stuff and then uh, you will hear me when I call you, all right? So come down to the water. It was an amazing experience. Also, we uh, spent time getting to know each other with my new colleagues. And yeah, the first day was a very nice way to introduce myself to the Swedish culture and also to kickstart the program. Now, on the second day, we were introduced to the Swedish school system and the democratic part of it. Here we were told about how they prioritize the voice of the students in the decisions they make. We also learned that in some schools, actually even the boards and the councils, they have students being part of them. Well, vocational, 33% of the students go to black. And this is the number for, as you can see, 2022. 79% received leaving qualifications. So there's a lot of people or students, approximately 20%, that doesn't get the, the leaving qualifications. And then we have something we call convents, for instance, that you can fix that. So there was an introduction that's done at the Nobel Museum and then after that we were divided into different groups. All the international teachers were divided into different groups and on this day we were supposed to tour or do a school visit 
Uh, we had around six groups going to six different schools. I had a chance to go to Lil Holman, where we went to a school called Stockholm Estetiska Gymnasium. Here, we learned that the school actually prioritizes or specializes in dance, music, and theater. And it was beautiful to watch how they run their programs here. Um, first, we had a welcome by Annika, who is the principal. I am the principal here at SIG. And uh, we'll start with just uh, putting your bags and everything in my room. And then we can go for a Swedish pika. Okay. Uh, oh, is any of you from Sweden? No. 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 <laughs> All right, so let's get to know each other. But you can just first bring your stuff. We were told about their mission and what they try to achieve in terms of the art side of things. Then we had a chance to go to the different classes and see how they teach, how the teachers teach and how they conduct the classes. What stood out for me was how calm and welcoming the classes were. Also, the classroom management in terms of the teachers was very good. I learned that actually if you can plan a lesson very, very well, then 50% of issues are actually gone because the students, the learners know exactly what they expected to do in the lesson. So it reduces the chaos. Another thing that was interesting was I saw that in every class there is a box next to the door where the students keep their phones before they step into the classroom. And also we saw noise cancelling headphones that are used by students whenever they want to lock in to a task and they want to cancel all the noise around. The phone issue was uh, something that was also even discussed in the summit itself because the world is now getting into a situation where we need to talk about mobile phones in schools and whether they are good or bad, or how we need to regulate them. So I saw a way that can work in terms of having the balance between maybe allowing the students to have mobile phones, but also not having them in class actively. Uh, yeah. And uh, uh, it, it, it came here, uh, I, I bought it. <laughs> from this uh, fantastic Chinese uh, uh, place and it was uh, only uh, in Chinese the instruction to build it so and the, and the all headphones. the students had to <laughs> and then they did Those it the wrong way but so they can sit and work in, when they work individually they can use that to not to be disturbed we also had a chance to go into the different programs that the school runs for example we went to a dance class which was very nice we also had a chance to witness or to be part of a performance, a rehearsal that the students are doing a band and they were very gracious to allow us to be part of it and to watch it. It was a lovely experience seeing that there are even students who are making music. Some of them have careers that are now starting uh, to pick up. Uh, some showed us even their Spotify accounts and what they're trying to do, the beats they're making. You see in the studio, you see students making, you know, uh, music. Some are actually shooting films, they're discussing about their scripts. And it's just lovely to watch when Pathways or careers start to take shape at an early age, but with a lot of guidance. One thing that stood out for me in this school was the interaction between the teachers and the students, the way they are open and they're warm. And also I learned that because of uh, the issues that learners might have, they are very deliberate and intentional about helping them. For example, they have a room or rooms that students can go when they have panic attacks, they can just go to a room and, you know, diffuse and there's someone there to help them go through the day. This is something I think we need to talk about in terms of mental health and uh, situations like that, how we can actually just build and make a school more welcoming and more affirming to the students, no matter the situation they're going through in their lives. 
it was such a lovely experience uh, attending and being part of the school program for a day. Anika was a good host. The teachers welcomed us. The students were so happy to see us. It's an experience that is going to stay with me for the rest of my life and it's going to change. It has changed the way I look at education and learning and teaching in general. After the school tour, we came back uh, to the Royal Museum where we shared about our experiences. The different teachers who went to different schools shared about their experiences. But I think the general idea, the theme that uh, could be seen through every presentation of that, it was an amazing experience for everyone, just seeing how schools in Sweden work and how deliberate they are in making the learning environment very conducive for the learners. After that, we toured the Royal Museum and yeah, looked forward to the next day, which was day three, which was the summit itself. The Nobel Prize Teacher Summit 2024. This is the day that we talk about education and the brain and we are going to listen to experts and researchers and then also share with colleagues about what we do and what we can learn from each other. It's going to be a very lovely day. I can't wait to meet everyone, to learn and also to share. See you on the other side. Welcome again. Now to day three, the summit itself. As I said, the summit takes place in one day, but teachers coming from different parts of the world are given an extended program that, you know, runs for around three more days. Now the summit happened on Friday 4th, October at the brewery and uh, it was an amazing experience. Being in a room full of enthusiastic educators, researchers, people who've traveled from all over the world and also Swedish teachers. Um, just being in a room with uh, Nobel laureates and sharing with uh, thinkers and leaders and then we are taken through a very beautiful program which talked about issues from inclusivity to research and uh, even things to do with mobile phones and the research that has been done around it. Another study where a majority of 14 to 18 year olds say that disturbances will decrease if teachers will support students better in their use. And also 80% of the participants they state that they rarely use the mobiles in class for non-class related matters. We also learned about the journeys of different Nobel laureates like Sir David Macmillan, the 2021 Nobel Prize winner in chemistry, who was an amazing speaker. He told us about his journey and also talked about in one of the breakout sessions the reason why we need to really fight for democracy in education, why we need to democratize education and make it accessible to everyone, no matter where you're born and no matter your situation in life. Your research and, and way to, to do it. Oh, unbelievably. I mean, for example, and I will not, I won't actually mention this in my breakout talk later, the, the, the Nobel Prize that I won was because of an idea that literally came about because I was standing at a chalkboard, a blackboard, and one of my students was asking a question, and as I wrote up the answer, I realized that basically this mechanism, this concept that was teaching the student was something that could be used for another problem that we'd been thinking about for years. And it was, if that student hadn't been provocative and said, you know, what is, how does this work? And if I hadn't been standing on that chalkboard, that idea would have never happened. So without question, teaching and Thinking about the underlying aspects of educating people absolutely connects to creativity and what's about to happen next, mm -hmm. unquestionably. I also went to a session, one of the breakout sessions was on uh, student-teacher relationship and how we need to balance it and make it more meaningful and more affirming in terms of bringing up the children and those who are uh, in our care in a way that would benefit each and every one of us. A teacher's action can greatly affect students' growth, both socially and academically. And we must understand that what we say and do might be our students. I learned so much during the conference, listening to speakers, listening to research that has been done over the years and refined. Also being told things like, you know, novel does not mean better. Just because 
there's a new way of doing something does not mean that it is a better way of doing something. And in this education space, you know, there's so many innovations that come our way every two minutes. And if you're not very careful, we need to, we can find ourselves in this, you know, uh, cycle of trying everything that comes our way, hoping that it's going to stick or something. And it was very interesting to hear that we need to be discerning in the way we handle innovations because some of them will not really be beneficial in the long term. Thank you. So uh, now with questions, please state your name and maybe where you're from and um, use the microphone because we're recording this. So. Thank you very much. Um, Dennis Omolo from Kenya. I just have a question to you and probably uh, my Swedish friends could answer this later on when they see me. What would it take for a country to have free education? At the summit, I also had a chance to interview some of my friends uh, who had a lot of things to say about their experience at the summit and what they had learned. Hi, um, my name is Ivani. I'm from Brazil, um, professor in neuroscience and experimental psychology. And I'm very happy to be here participating uh, of the uh, Nobel Prize Teacher Summit. And it's great for me to see how the neuroscience concepts and basic knowledge might be applied to improve education and our methodologies at class. So thank you. Uh, hi, I'm uh, Pontus. I teach English, psychology and law. And hello, my name is Amanda and I teach geography and social studies. <laughs> yeah. So what's our takeaway from, yeah. from the summit? It's uh, a bit uh, overwhelming right now, I think, since we uh, uh, ended with this very uh, emotional uh, speak about uh, mm -hmm. civil rights movements and democracy. So. I was uh, a bit uh, yeah overwhelmed in the in the ending here, but it's been a um, very interesting day, I think. Um, and and it's, I, it's your first time here? Yeah, it's my first time okay. here. Uh, I'm from Stockholm. Uh, we work actually at, at the same school here in Stockholm, uh, high school. And uh, yeah, I think it was uh, very interesting about the mind and how it works and uh, how we are learning things. And I got lots of new perspectives about uh, yeah. uh, that. My takeaway was, um, I think, uh, meeting colleagues from all over the world. Uh, it's, um, I think it's always an experience that uh, amazes me because even though we're from different parts of the world, we tend to have the same values and we tend to get along and and understand each other uh, immediately uh, so yeah that's that's my takeaway I think. hi I'm Sujina from Nepal and attending the Nobel Prize Teacher Summit has been an amazing experience I've been learning a lot about uh, the how the mind works and how the process of learning works so hearing from all the inspirational speakers regarding um, AI and learning regarding well-being, the importance of well-being in education, regarding how you discover knowledge. They've all been very inspiring and I'm totally enjoying this experience. Uh, my name is Sibule Lemakini. I'm from South Africa, Cape Town. Uh, I'm a grade four to six teacher. So what I found most interesting about the summit is learning about the science of learning, uh, which is the business that I'm involved in. And it was very interesting uh, going to sessions where I learned what does science say about learning? How should it happen? What are the conditions that are conducive for proper learning? And I think that was the most mind-blowing thing for me. And I'm going to take away all these nuggets that I got and go implement back at home. Thank you. Hi, my name is Carolina. I'm from Colombia. And I teach philosophy and social sciences and economy. The thing or the feelings that I take with me and my country uh, about this summit was like the infinite possibilities we have as a teachers, but as a human beings to build our own lives, dreams and hopes. Hello, my name is Lynn Thornton. I'm a middle school principal at Jones Middle School in Georgia from the States. 
This is my first time at the uh, Nobel Prize Teacher Summit, and it has been life changing. Um, I have loved hearing from all of the speakers, having the opportunity to tour a Swedish school, but then also learning from the other participants that are here from around the world. So I look forward to figuring out how to capture all of the learning I've had today to bring back to my school, to my district, and just continue to push our goals forward um, as I think about education across the world globally. So hello and welcome everyone. My name is Sofia Banfavi. I come from Hungary, Budapest, uh, originally, but six years ago I moved to Sweden and I'm a teacher of English and civics. Here in Stockholm I teach English literature and prep courses for university on the high school level. And uh, I love it actually. And um, it's really exciting to, to be here, to experience it, to to uh, meet colleagues. Um, your question was like how I, uh, what I think about this summit and well I think it's really inspiring. Um, first of all I always find it fascinating uh, when scientists, real scientists, uh, are able to talk about complex um, phenomenon or um, their complex research in a way that everyone can understand it. And today we experienced that, that there were really difficult, complex uh, research that we got to learn about because they interpreted it, uh, they, they interpreted it, they talked about it in a way that it was completely understandable. So that was fascinating. And also I loved uh, to meet colleagues and to see that I'm not alone. Everyone has the same difficulties and challenges and it was lovely to meet so many people having the same goal. Yes, teaching and yeah, being here and support our students. That was lovely. As you've seen, the summit was amazing. So much learning happened. I made lots of friends. That is one thing I'm always going to remember. I made lots of friends from all over the world. People were warm. The Swedish culture is amazing. We learned a lot of beautiful things. Our minds have been opened in some way. And it is something I would recommend to every teacher, every educator. If you can, uh, you need to attend the Nobel Prize Teacher Summit. After the summit, uh, we had the day four, which was uh, the day we were going to reflect, we reflected on our learning around the summit and after that we were taken through the old town Gamlastan. We did a tour of Gamlastan which is probably the most famous part of Stockholm in terms of tourist sites. And we learned about the history, what makes this part of town this unique, walking on the cobblestone streets, the narrow pathways, feeling the history around us, just seeing the beauty of the whole place. It was an amazing experience being at the center of it all. And yeah, after this day, I had to come back home, sadly, but I came back home with a lot of beautiful memories. So many friends made, so many beautiful things uh, to think about. And uh, the experience has just been an eye-opening one for me. If you're watching this and you're interested, you can look at the link in the description. I'm, I'm going to put a link there for the registration for the 2025 summit. Traditionally, they have done the summit every October, but from 2025, they're doing it in March. The 2025 summit is on March 28th and registration is open. So you will click the link in the description for the registration. So that was it, my experience at the Nobel Prize Teacher Summit, one of the most prestigious gathering of educators in the world. And thanks for watching. See you in the next one. So in the Spanish, one, two, three, amigo, amigo.